Well, I couldn't ask for a better way to start 2024. You are about to watch my interview with Orange Cassidy. Yes, arguably one of the best wrestlers of 2023. If you disagree, argue with your mother. The international champion at AEW as he talks about the Super Bowl weekend collision that will be happening here at the home of the Super Bowl, Las Vegas, Nevada. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, do all of that. Happy New Year. Hope you had a great holidays. But now it's time to get back to work. Where is the cutoff date where you can stop saying Happy New Year's in casual conversation? Uh, probably January 2nd. So you're quick with it. You're quick with it. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, like, I'm not one of those people that, uh, leaves up the decorations. Actually, I don't decorate at all, but I don't, you know, those people that have the decorations up for like a month, like Christmas is over. Take them down. You, you take the Christmas tree down on the 26th. Uh, oh no, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't put the work in for a real Christmas tree, but I, uh, I think you should probably take it down probably after the new, like probably January 2nd, you're taking it down. All right. You know what? As a man who, who's put up his title and is always looking towards the future, I like that mindset. You know what I'm saying? We can't just reflect on the past. Um, and before we get into some of this wrestling um, and everything going on with AEW and yourself, I do need to know outside of the ring, how many jean jackets do you currently own at this moment? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I actually, it's got to be in the, it's, it's got to be at a minimum a baker's dozen that I can wear. But uh, I have other ones that I cannot wear anymore that I don't know what to do with, and they're just sitting there. I'm probably going to give them to like a charity or something. Like, what do you do with those? I mean, at some point, AEW is going to have a physical Hall of Fame. So you can have like your own your own section right there with all the jean jackets and the matches. Um, and a- another question I do need to ask you about is, you know, John Moxley, this man has stabbed you with a fork in your head um, in a professional setting. Can you walk me through or kind of describe the pain of going through that? Well, it happened very fast, and when I'm when I'm when I'm when I have my hands in my pockets in front of over seventy five thousand people, and then I turn around and a monster of a man is running at me with a fork and stabs me in the head. I I just went down, and then I don't really remember anything after that because I kind of like you know went to that other other weird realm I go into when I get angry and. I remember after the fact, I had I, I had a huge fork gash in my head that took at least, and um, he scarred me forever. So there's a scar, and I had it forever because John Moxley and a fork. Yeah, in a professional setting. Um, and it, on the more serious note, you know, this month, you know, as AEW celebrates it. It's being in existence for five years, right? Um, I think one of the cooler parts of of the journey of AEW and for like a more casual fan like myself is getting introduced to you and guys like Eddie Kingston, finding out that, you know, it, the the years and years and years of traveling to get to this point for me to be watching you on the screen and be like, oh, who's this guy, this overnight success? And it's like, no, there's been years and years of that. And the one thing that I, I salute you is your your presentation, how you present yourself, uh, what, how you view professional wrestling. Um, so I guess my question to you is, you know, there, there's been a lot of detractors and things like people like to say stuff online, um, you know, sometimes negative, sometimes positive, but for you to maintain that belief in what you believe in, in your presentation. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, a lot of people say overnight success and I don't really care. Like you don't need to know, what I've done before this, you just, I, I want you to take me as I am now, which I think is very important because sometimes people get sympathy for the grind. Cause we all can sympathize with something that's, that's taken a long time to get to. But um, I, I, I want you to take me for who I am as I am right now. And I uh, like guys like Eddie Kingston and stuff like I, I, I but Eddie Kingston's a different story than me, but 
I, I know I could speak for myself when I say that um, I would uh, I would not be able to have thrived the way I am in AEW if it was another place. AEW let me be me, right? They let me do what I want to do, and um, I believed in it. And my style is my style. I take a lot of pride in it. That they that no one can say. Oh, Orange Cassidy's wrestles like this. So Orange Cassidy's a guy like this who came before me. Um, I take a lot of pride in being an original. And I, you know, I, I didn't think that was going to happen after a year, right? But I, I just, I just did what I wanted to do. I, I knew if I liked what I was doing, other people were eventually going to like it. And yeah, there's going to be people on the internet that say stuff, but like. Who cares? <laughs> You're on the internet. I, I care about the people that are in the are right there in the seats and watching on TV. Yeah, and it's like you know, as soon as that screen goes blank, it doesn't exist in the real world. Um, and like you bring up AEW and 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 you know what it's brought to the wrestling business, right? Um, I do have to ask you because again, like it's admirable your belief. You did say something right there though, where you're like, if I like it, I know other people would. So if there's someone out there that's watching this interview, that is, it doesn't matter what approach, if they're trying to follow your path, if they're trying to be Bray Wyatt or something that we haven't even thought of, is the advice, do something that you like? Would that be the advice? Well, it's kind of silly that you would do something that you hated to get to where you are. And, I, you know, I don't, I'm not saying that there weren't compromises. I'm not saying that everything I do is 100% what pops out of my brain. I'm saying that I, I would figure out the way that to do the thing that I want to do the best way that I liked it. Um, I, I think it's silly to think that people don't compromise. I think there's, there's, there's a give and a take, right? Yeah. And I think when you shut yourself down from the comp from compromising, then you shut yourself down from other people and 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 really constructive criticism, right? And I think that's something we we don't uh, take into consideration. And um, I think some of the best art that is made is because you have limitations set on you, which makes you become even more creative. Um, so I, I, I think if, if you figure out a way to, to do the thing you want to do within the constraints that you have, I think that'll be successful. And you did bring up here at the beginning, Wembley stadium, 75,000 people. Then you have dynamite, uh, with the fantastic promo to close out the show. Then you main event all out, which ends with a standing ovation of over 10,000 people in Chicago. When, when I look at your AEW career specifically, was that the proudest week, in your opinion, for you? Sure, uh, sure. And I also think it was a very special week for AEW. And I, you know, I was at, I had my match against PAC at Revolution 2020, and right before the world shut down. I started to get a little momentum. And people, that was the first time people saw me wrestle, I think. Um, and then to be in Chicago um, doing that with John Moxley, I think, uh, I think it's very important for wrestling fans now, especially AEW fans who appreciate the professional wrestling of of art, can see a, a person like me go through growth and go through changes, right? I think it's important that we we show our changes and the things that we've gone through to become different people in the end. And I... I I think if you looked at those years up to that point with John Moxley, you'd be like, oh yeah, that's, that's not the same orange Cassidy that was, that was here, but it still is orange Cassidy. And I think that's very, very important. Is, is that something that you're thankful for to be a part of that? Like to, to not only was it cool from one perspective to be like, you're a worker workhorse for the company Moxley is you guys don't take vacations, but also that you got to go up against someone that brought that out of you. Uh, yeah, I mean, John Moxley is, 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 a is a leader for AEW. Um, I think a lot of people look to look to John Moxley for, um, 
leadership. I, um, I am too, like John Moxley, a person that leads by example. And I saw the example that he was setting and I was like, you know what? I want to do that. <laughs> so, you know, I tried to, uh, I tried, but no one can be John Moxley because there is no John Moxley, but, uh, um, yeah, no, he, uh, I am forever in his debt for him changing and bringing out this version of me that I, that is clearly a better version because I still have this thing and I beat. Oh, there it is. It's beautiful. It's shiny. Everyone can see it. February 11th, Here, I'll Saturday show, night. I'll show it so it's like you can see it. There it's it is. Really nice. I don't know why. It might be that, but it's beautiful. You can check it out February 11th, Saturday night for the first time. AW Collision here in Vegas the night before the big game. Um, and the, to wrap up kind of all my questions of going down memory lane, uh, pardon me, that's been the theme of the interview with the five years of AEW. Um, I, I know that you've spoken about um, how the Bucks kind of vouched for you and brought you into the company. And, of course, you can look at Kenny, you can look at Cody, um, and, and a few of these other guys that were with you building this company. Um, what are some words that you can say about them to, like, I don't know, man, it's just – I hope you guys realize like the impact you guys have had on the sport and the fans to be able to give us this option and like how cool that is. Yeah. I, I, I owe, I owe it all to them. Like I, I, like I said, this, it, it, this place is truly different. We are truly an alternative. And if you know anything about the young bucks, Kenny Omega, like, they're alternative. They they do what they want to do, but they're the most they are they are genuine people. And I um I I don't think AW would be AW, obviously elite without uh without the elite, but they they truly are a, a, a leaders and, and I I never they've never lied to me at all. And I, I really think they are the soul of AEW. Um because a lot of their values um, that started this company, I still hold uh, to for my everyday life and, and, and AEW. I know the holidays are over. 2024 is here. And we can't forget about grandma hooking you up for Christmas with a lot of cash. And now you need to figure out, well, what am I going to spend it on? I have a suggestion, Zip Chair, Zip Chair Gaming. Whether you need furniture for the man cave, the living room, wherever around the house, sofa, couches, they got you. But let me speak to you from my personal experience, and that's where Zip Chair Gaming comes in. They're gaming chairs, best in the business. I spend a lot of hours, whether I'm here at the station in this studio or my studio at home, doing interviews, doing my shows, recording, editing, all of that stuff, gaming, whatever it is, you need to improve your quality of life. Zipchair can help you. Plus, we live in a world where branding is so important for everybody, right? The customization is amazing. There is nothing like sitting in a chair with your own logo, like you're in the locker room in any pro team. Get hooked up zipchairgaming.com and be sure to use that discount code adrian a-d-r-i-a-n for an extra 10 percent zipchair gaming uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna hit you with a speed round here coming up but the one question i do need to ask you and then we've been lucky enough to have samoa joe and others on the show recently and i was lucky enough to be in la for full gear and i gotta tell you something man being a fan uh i've never been in an environment in an arena that was just in complete shock like they were when Swerve Strickland and Adam Hangman Page had their Texas death match. Um, when you're back there watching, what was your reaction live as you were watching it? Uh, said, um, I believe I said out loud, uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I said pass. So, yeah. that Yeah, no, um, I, uh, yeah. I steer clear. And that's and that's coming from someone's step with a fork. <laughs> yeah, you've got the fork, but the rest now we're out. And you know what? Honestly, I don't think anyone watching this or listening to this right now can blame you. Uh, before we get you out of here, let's get you into the speed round. Um, you know, kind of self-explanatory. I ask you questions, answer as quickly as you can. We'll start off with this: memories of your first match ever. None. I don't have any. I don't really know. I don't remember. Strangest place you've ever wrestled. China. 
Will Ben Stiller walk out with Chris Statlander in 2024 for a match on AEW? Fingers crossed. <laughs> Hopefully. Weirdest person in the locker room. Weirdest person in the locker room? Yes. Well, there's there's a uh, few, now that I think of it. Uh, the weirdest person in the locker room? I mean, I can give you, a, you know... I think the weirdest person in the locker room is probably Brian Danielson. And why is that? I can't tell you that. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I got to earn my stripes. Two more. The debate with Jericho or the promo leading into All Out. If I made you pick one, what are you going with? Uh, the promo with All Out because I did way too much research for that first one. I never want to do and then my final one, I don't know if you follow baseball or not. Shohei Otani recently signed with the Dodgers. Uh, I think it was like $800 million, the biggest sports contract in North American history. Um, if you could give a similar contract to one person in AEW, who would you give that to? Orange Cassidy. Man wants a savings account in the good future. There we go. <laughs> International what, champion. What, what other, like, like what am I Will Ospreay? Nah, you know, I'm me. I'll take it. <laughs> I mean, what, I'm just, other people, do other people say other answers? Like, what is that? Well, it's the first. It's the first time I've asked it. Uh, now that now, now that we've, I was trying to like make a special one for you, but now that we've talked this out in person, and I'm going to keep this in. We're pre-recording this. I'm going to keep it in. But fair enough. Everyone should say themselves if they're smart. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, if you put value on yourself, right? I don't know. That's that's a little bit. Eh, true. Fair enough. You keep the money. You enjoy it. You deserve it, my friend. Orange Cassidy joining us. International champion. He'll be dollar. He'll be at the Dollar Loan Center February 11th, the night before the big game. AEW Collision. That title. Go get your tickets at AEWTixTix.com. OC, thank you for the time, sir. Thank you. And, uh, you know, maybe if... Uh... If Shibata gets his stuff together, we can, you can see me and Shibata rolling craps or at the roulette table. <laughs>